Good morning and welcome to the Thursday uh, Bible study and devotion here at, at First Presbyterian Church. So um, apparently it's a uh, root for your own sports team day with me. Uh, you see my Packers stuff in the background. You see my Florida Gators. I, I didn't really plan that. Um, uh, my wife, uh, in fact, asked me, did you plan that? And if I were to stand up, you'd see I'm wearing blue shorts. Uh, so I've got like Gators colors on today. I didn't even know. I even have blue and orange tennis shoes. I I'm wearing blue and orange tennis shoes, believe it or not. I didn't plan that. Just walked out of the house that way. Uh, on my way to the uh, to the, the, the men's uh, Bible study at our place uh, and then came here to, to, to shoot the video. But it is what it is. So go Packers, go Gators, and uh, go First Peter. All right, so if you have your Bibles, let's go to First Peter uh, chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. And our video will be will be brief this morning, but but uh, notice again the pattern. Okay, we 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 can't hark on this enough. I mean, so w when God calls us to obey Him, uh, He He normally I would always I would even say always reminds us what He's done for us, uh, so that we would be motivated to obey Him. Okay, so. I think I've used this example before, um, and and many of you could probably, you know, uh, recite it off the top of your brains now because I've probably said it a lot. Uh, but remember the Ten Commandments, okay? So uh, Exodus chapter twenty, people believe uh, most people will if you ask them, okay, how does the Ten Commandments begin? And they'll say, well, with commandment number one, you'll have no other gods before me. But actually, the Ten Commandments don't begin with commandment number one. There's a there's a a, a prologue there. there there's a there's a uh, there's there's an announcement that comes before the commandment. There's an indicative that comes before the imperative. And what is that? Well, Exodus chapter twenty verse one, God reminds them of who He is. God reminds them of what He has done, and God reminds them of why He did what He did. That is to make them, the Israelites, his people. So God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I have ransomed you. I have saved you. And now, commandment number one, because I've ransomed, ransomed you, because I've saved you, because I've revealed myself to you as the one and only true God who has exercised grace over you, who has loved you, therefore obey me. Therefore obey me. We, we, we don't obey God for the sake of obedience, and we don't obey God to try to gain his favor. We obey God. Our faithfulness and our obedience unto God is a joyful, emphatic, wholehearted response to the massive amount of grace he's lavished on us in and through his son, Jesus Christ. This is what Peter's doing, all right? Peter's following that that that, that pattern that, that set down for us in Exodus 20. I would even argue the pattern set down for us in Genesis 1 and 2 from the very beginning. Um, and so, therefore, this is the pattern of the Christian life. God declaring unto us who he is. God declaring unto us what he's done for us. And God declaring unto us our new identity as a result of his work. And so, take your Bibles and look at 1 Peter chapter 1. And let's begin, let's pick up in verse 17. That's kind of where we left off last time. But verse 17, Peter says, And if you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. Remember, he, he reminds them that you are exiles. Remember uh, chapter 1, verse 1, he's, uh, Peter says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles. I mean, right out of the gate, he, he, he's reminding his readers, look, you are called uh, to be in the world, but not of the world. You, be, you are in the world, you're not of the world. You are sojourners. This place is not your home. Um, but in the meantime, while you're in this place, conduct yourselves in the fear of God. Be obedient unto him, because he has you in this world for a purpose, to do his work for his glory. And so he says, uh, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. What, what does it mean to conduct yourselves with fear? Um, well, it's, this is, this is fear, the, the fear of God, right? The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. 
What does it mean to fear God? It means, uh, I've always described to people, uh, uh, fearing God is basically a reverential, a reverential awe over who God is and what he's done. And there is a quaking of the knees, um, but it's not like worldly fear. So if you're, you know, I'm, um, I don't like closed, uh, tight spaces. I don't do tight spaces. I, um, a church member who, who works for Disney got, uh, myself and, and two of my, uh, older kids, uh, tickets into Epcot to go see Toby Mac, who's a Christian music artist. He was there for a concert. And afterwards we, we, we rode some other rides and there's a, there's a, a astronaut ride. I can't remember the name of it. There's an astronaut ride in there, uh, in, in the park. And, and we were walking toward it. And both of my girls, both my older girls said, dad, you would not like it. You would not like the ride. I said, why? They said, because it's like getting into an astronaut capsule and they, it's really tight. It's like a little ball and they shut the doors. And I, I said, nope, I'm not. I will ride the fastest roller coaster in the world that does 15 loop to loops and you, while going, you know, Mach 2 and I will do that, but I will not get inside an enclosed space and be moved around. That's, that's just not what I do. You know, I don't, I don't do enclosed spaces. And so, uh, I'm, I'm afraid of closed spaces, so therefore, I hate them. I avoid them. That's what fear is. You hate the thing that you're afraid of. You, you avoid the thing that you're afraid of. But biblical fear, the fear of God, um, that's not like worldly fear. The fear of God actually causes you to draw into the Lord. <laughs> Once you, you don't hate him, the fear of God causes you to love him and to see him for his majestic mystery and, and 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 his awesomeness and his might and his beauty and his power and his his glory is to be in reverential awe of who he is while your knees are quaking that's what it means to be in the fear of the lord to realize who he is in relation to who and what you are and what he's done for you so we are to conduct ourselves as exiles in the fear of the lord but look at verse 18 knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. There it is. Okay, you see it? The indicative imperative pattern, all right? Conduct yourselves with fear uh, throughout the time of your exile, knowing, knowing, not feeling. I feel, no. No with truth with truth you see as christians we have to preach the gospel to ourselves we have to you know we, we can't feel our way into christianity because our emotions and our feelings are tainted with sin and they will betray us every, every single time every single time our emotions and 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 feelings will lie to us unless unless we bring them under control of the truth what we know of the gospel and so that's why Peter says, look, you, you've got to preach. If you're going to live in fear of the Lord, you're going to conduct yourselves in, in the fear of the Lord as exiles. If you're going to live all of life in obedience uh, to God and, and, and for the glory of God, then you have to know certain things. You have to, you have to tell yourself certain things. You have to preach you, to yourself certain universal binding truths. And what is the truth that, that he's telling us to preach to ourselves? Um that you were uh, ransomed from the futile ways that you inherited from your forefathers by the precious blood of Christ. You are ransomed by the blood of Christ. So therefore, walk in obedience unto God. Therefore, live for God's glory. Therefore, know that because he has paid for you through his son, Jesus Christ, you belong to him. Your thoughts should be in obedient to him. Your feelings should be obedient to him. Your body should be in, obedient to him, in, in obedience to him. And so you are his. You are, you are the child of God. And so this day and, and every day afterwards, preach that message to yourself so you can be in obedience to God, so you can live for him, so you can live for his glory and grow in your Christian walk. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your grace and goodness toward us. Thank you so much for, for ransoming us through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, so that we may live for you. God, help us in the power of the Holy Spirit preach the gospel to ourselves so we can live for your glory. 
And all these things ask your son's precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, if you have any uh, questions or comments about the video today, um, feel free to email me or, or, or give me a call. Um, uh, I'm praying for you. But in the meantime, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And I hope to see you Sunday. God bless.